Hallelujah. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as you join. Hallelujah. God is truly worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. He's worthy of the adoration. Hallelujah. I do apologize for that. I had a slight technical difficulty that I had to take care of. But we are back. We are back for this week's Bible study. God bless you, Carlton. God bless you, Jay Marie. God bless you, Prophetess Charity. God is truly awesome. God is amazing and he is worthy to be adored. Is there anybody here that's excited? Is there anybody here that's excited to hear the word of the Lord? Hallelujah. Our God is great and mighty. I don't know about you, but I am grateful for the privilege of life. I'm grateful for the privilege of life, for the privilege of health. I'm grateful, grateful to God for the many blessings that he has released upon me, the many blessings that he's released upon my household. And I know for many of you, you guys share the same exact sentiments, the same exact, you know, feelings, the same exact gratitude to God. Our God is worthy. Our God is holy. Our God is righteous. And I believe that on this evening, there is a word from the Lord, a very, very critical word, a very, very important word that I want to share with you that I believe is going to serve as a reminder, a very, very important reminder of the times that we're living in as well as what God's will is for us. Not just now, but going forward beyond this moment in time. Hallelujah. As you guys are joined, please do me a favor and let me know where you're viewing from. God bless you, Carlton, from Los Angeles, California. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please do me a favor and also share this broadcast. Share this broadcast with your friends, with your family, co-workers, whoever you know you feel led to share this broadcast with again i believe it's going to be something that's going to be a blessing amen i give you guys a few moments to jump on here and then we'll go straight into prayer hallelujah hallelujah let us pray father in jesus name god i just thank you and bless you lord god i magnify you lord god i honor you and reverence you lord god for you are great and mighty for you are holy lord god for there is no one like you lord god i thank you and bless you lord god for your great and mighty power i thank you and bless you lord god for every moment in time lord god that you show yourself to be faithful in our lives father i thank you and bless you lord god for you are the prince of peace i thank you and bless you lord god for you are the everlasting father father i lift your name up lord god i glorify your name god i magnify your name lord god for there is no name that is greater than your name i lift up you lord god i lift up the great name of jesus for in the name of jesus there is salvation in the name of jesus there is healing in the name of jesus there is protection in the name of jesus there is safety so lord god i just thank you and bless you lord god for you being the great i am for you being the great deliverer for you being the great redeemer for you sending your comforter to us god i thank you for holy spirit holy spirit we invite you in this place holy spirit we welcome you in this place holy spirit we invite you to have your way we invite you to move in the ways that you see fit to move holy spirit we invite you in we ask now oh god that you would inhabit this place oh god we ask now lord god that you would inhabit this broadcast father i pray in jesus name lord god that this broadcast would be filled with your presence god father i pray in jesus name that this time of study this time of reflection upon your word lord god that it would be filled with your spirit that it would be charged with your spirit that it would be carried by your spirit oh god father i pray now in jesus name i ask oh god that you would speak through me freely lord god that your word would be heard through me lord god not my own words god not my own will oh god but your voice lord god your spirit lord god your power lord god in the name of jesus father i pray lord god for every person that's viewing this broadcast father i pray lord god that you would touch their hearts god touch their minds god minister to them now in the name of jesus father i pray lord god that you would open their ears god to hear your voice God father I pray that you would open their ears oh God to hear your heart Lord God father I pray Lord God that you would open their eyes to be able to see God bless you Helen father I pray Lord God that you would open their eyes that they would be able to see to see what you are revealing oh God to see your heart's desire Lord God to see clearly Lord God what you are saying to us in this hour father I pray in Jesus name Lord God that you would open the eyes of our heart Lord God that we would be able to see your love Lord God that we would be able to see your perfect will for us oh God in the name 
name of Jesus. Father, I bind and rebuke now every demonic distraction. I bind and rebuke now every demonic opposition in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare and decree that this atmosphere, this broadcast, will be brought under the subjection of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray now, O God, and I ask, Lord God, that you would release now, Lord God, ministering angels, O God, ministering angels, Lord God, to minister to us, O God, the heirs of yours, uh, uh, the heirs of salvation, Lord God. Father, I thank you and bless you, Lord God, for even the great works of healing, Lord God, healing that will take place, Lord God, through the teaching of the word, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for deliverance that will take place, O God, through the teaching of the word, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for healing and deliverance that will take place through the teaching of the word, through the proclamation of the word, Lord God. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you would help us, Lord God, to comprehend your word, O God. Father, I pray that you would help us, O God, to comprehend what you are saying to us, O God. Open our ears, God, that we would hear what your spirit is saying to us, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ, come on, lift your voice to God right there. Just begin to take a moment and magnify him. Take a moment and tell God how great he is. Take a moment and tell God how worthy he is. Take a moment and tell God how awesome he is. Take a moment and magnify the name of our God. Come on, take a moment and lift your voice to him. Lift your voice to him and bless him. When you honor God, uh, when you honor God, God begins to move. When you honor God, he begins to show up. When you honor God, he begins to show himself strong. When you honor God, he begins to show himself faithful. When you honor God, he begins to show himself mighty. Honor precedes a move of God. Honor precedes a move of God. Honor precedes a move of God. Come on, take a moment right here and honor God. Come on, tell God how much you love him. God, we love you, God. We thank you and we magnify you. We honor you, God. We bless you, God. We adore you, Lord God, for there is no one like you, God. For there is no one worthy, oh God. You are the only one that's worthy. You are the only one that's worthy of the praise. You are the only one that's worthy of our worship. You are the only one that's worthy of the adoration. You are the only one that is worthy to be honored. You are the only one that is worthy to be worshipped, God. So we come before you, Lord God, with hearts of thanksgiving. We come before you, God, with hearts of adoration, God. We come before you, Lord Lord God, laying down our agendas, oh God, laying at your feet, Lord God, prostrate before you, Lord God. We come before you, God, to worship you, Lord God. We come before you, Lord God, to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God. We come before you, God, to worship you and to present ourselves to you, God, as living sacrifices, oh God. We pray, Lord God, that you would cleanse us, Lord God, from anything that doesn't line up with your will, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that you would cleanse us, Lord God, from anything that doesn't line up with your will, anything that doesn't bring you glory, anything that doesn't bring you honor, Lord God. Father, I pray, Lord God, that your cleansing, your refining fire would be released on, on, on us even now, oh God, to purify us, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we honor you, God. We bless you, God. We magnify you and we adore you, God. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, God. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you and thank you for joining us for this week's Bible study. God bless you, Philippa from Belize God bless you we're glad to have you God bless you Alicia we're glad that you joined and we're, we're thankful for everyone else that uh, has jumped on this viewing this broadcast on this evening on this evening what we're going to be discussing here is the importance of keeping our fire burning keeping our fire burning it's important that we keep the fire that fire that God has placed on the inside of us it's important that we keep that flame burning it's important that we don't let that flame burn out it's important that we don't let that fire burn out it's important that we don't let that fire dwindle and diminish God has placed a fire on the inside of us to pursue him God has placed a fire on the inside of us for us to love him God has placed a fire on the inside of us for us to do his will for us to walk up right before him God has placed a fire God bless you prophet Darius God has placed a fire on the inside of us for us to do his will for us to accomplish his perfect will in the earth God has placed a fire on the inside of us and it's God's will that we would burn for him it's God's will that we would burn for him like never before it's God's will that when we show up people encounter the fire of God it's God's will that when we show up people encounter the presence of God it's God's will that when we show up people encounter the love of God it's God's will that every place that we go the presence of God is revealed it's God's will that every place that we go the kingdom of God is revealed now when I speak in regards to the kingdom of God I'm referring to the kingdom the power of God the rulership of God the, the authority of God
God that has been given to the church. So when we go into places, it's God's will that the kingdom is revealed. It's God's will that the authority of God is demonstrated. It's God's will that the power of God, the righteousness of God, the love of God, the justice of God, the gospel of Christ, it's God's will that those things are revealed. But in order for us to live life from that premise, our fire has to be burning. In order for us to fulfill the will of God, our fire has to be burning. We have to be on fire for God. Is there anybody here that's on fire for God? Is there anybody here that is, is on fire for God? Are you burning for Him? Are you burning for Jesus? Or has your fire diminished? Are you burning for Jesus? Or has your fire diminished? Are you burning for Him? Or, or have you become distracted by the cares of life? Are you burning for Him? Or have you become discouraged because of the things that you see around you? Are you burning for Him? Or have you become distracted? Discourage because you're no longer walking by faith but you're walking by sight you're walking according to the things that you see around you God doesn't want us to walk according to the things that we see around us God wants us to walk according to faith God wants us to live by faith the just shall live by faith those that have been justified shall live by faith without faith it's impossible to please God so if we're not living by faith our life is not pleasing to God if we're not living by faith we're not pleasing him it's impossible to please God without faith are you on fire for God are you burning for him come on if you're burning for God if you're on fire for him type in the comments I'm on fire for God type in the comments I'm on fire for God I'm burning for him if you're on fire for God make that confession make that decree from your mouth say I'm on fire for God I'm burning for him the word fire the word fire it means burning the word fire it means zeal it means burning zeal it means passion it means burning passion it means to give life or spirit to it means to inspire so when I say that we are on fire for God that means that we have been set ablaze we have a burning zeal for God we have a burning zeal for Jesus Christ we have a burning zeal to see the will of God done we have a burning passion a burning desire to accomplish the will of God we have a burning zeal to do God's will we have a burning zeal to fulfill the Word of God we have a burning passion we have been set ablaze and infused and inspired by the Spirit of God so because we've been infused and inspired by the Spirit of God when we are on fire for God we are living life from the supernatural power of God we're living life from the fire of God we're living life from the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit that's the place that God wants us to live in God wants us to live life from that premise why because as believers we have an assignment to be ambassadors in the earth as believers we have an assignment to represent Jesus Christ in the earth as believers we have an assignment to proclaim the gospel as believers we have an assignment to do the very things that Jesus Jesus did in the earth and more we have an assignment to seek and save the lost for Jesus is our example for Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith Jesus is the one that we are supposed to pattern our lives after this is why the Bible says looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith he's the one that we should be looking to the Bible tells us that we should be imitators of God as dear children we should be imitating what God is doing. We should be seeking every opportunity to do the things that Jesus did. We should be studying the life of Jesus. We should be immersed in the Word of God. If we're not immersed in the Word of God, then our fire is going to diminish. If we're not immersed in the Word of God, then our desire to do the will of the Lord is going to begin to decrease and diminish. And ultimately, we will find ourselves living life instead of being infused by the Spirit of God, will be governed and ruled by the flesh. Instead of being led by the Spirit of God will be led by the sensual nature instead of being governed by the Holy Spirit will be govern governed by our fleshly appetites and that is not the will of God our fleshly appetites wage war against the fire that's burning on the inside of us the dictates and the appetites of the flesh will only produce one thing and that's death when we live according to the flesh it is inevitable things in our lives will begin to die for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus are you on fire for God are you on fire for God so that word fire it means burning zeal or passion burning passion it means to give life or spirit to it means to inspire now I want to show you something here in Scripture let's go to the book of John chapter number 8 and we're gonna look at verse number 12 John chapter 8 verse number 12 
now this is Jesus speaking and this is what Jesus says then Jesus again then Jesus spake again uh, excuse me then spake Jesus again unto them saying I am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life again John chapter 8 verse number 12 then spake Jesus uh, uh, Jesus again unto them saying I am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life now when I read this scripture there were a few things that stood out to me from this text of scripture here and one of the first things that stood out to me was the fact that Jesus says I am the light of the world that's a very very powerful statement Jesus says I am the light of the world so when Jesus makes this statement he is revealing that he carries something that is so great that it has the power to ignite or infuse the world Jesus was revealing that he carries something that is so great that it has the power and the supernatural ability to expel every form of darkness that's in existence in the world. So Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Jesus is saying, I am the one who is qualified to expel the darkness that is, is, is operating on the earth. In the same way that Jesus said that he is the light of the world in that passage of scripture, he is still the light of the world today. He is still the answer. Jesus is the answer to the issues that we're dealing with today. Jesus is the answer to the problems that we are being confronted with today. Jesus is the answer to the demonic systems that are rising up in the earth. Jesus is the answer to the demonic systems and infrastructures that are being erected in the nations of the earth. Jesus is the answer. He is the only one that has the ability to expel the darkness that's in operation. But we know that Jesus Jesus died we know that Jesus was risen from the dead by God and so we know that that when Jesus died he now from his from the premise of the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ he made it possible for many people many people that place their faith in Jesus Christ to become the sons of God and when you become a son or daughter of God you are now a carrier of the light of Jesus Christ you are now a carrier of the same light that Jesus Christ carried you are a carrier of the same light that Jesus carries that that has the power and the ability to expel darkness from the earth God bless you Carol so you and I we are carriers of the light of Christ we are carriers of the light of Christ that word light in that scripture in John chapter 8 verse 12 one of the meanings for that word light it means fire it means a uh, fire it almost like a uh, fire in the likeness of a uh, moral uprightness you know moral um, cleanliness you know moral character that reflects the nature and and the, the character and virtue of God another meaning for that word fire in the scripture or excuse me for the word light in the scripture it talks about a, a, a type of light that is so bright that it almost gives off you know um, like the light or the likeness of a star so it's talking about a brightness a light that is so great to where when it shows up darkness has no choice but to be expelled when it shows up on the scene darkness cannot exist in the presence of this light because the light is that great I've come to tell you that it's the will of God that his church his body exempl uh, exemplify and demonstrate that type of light in the earth it's the will of God that we demonstrate his light in the earth so that the darkness can no longer be able to stand in the presence of the light of Jesus Christ the light of Jesus Christ is rooted in righteousness the light of Jesus Christ is rooted in love the light of Jesus Christ is rooted in the justice of God the light of Jesus Christ is rooted in the integrity of God the light of Jesus Christ is rooted in the character of God so when we operate in the light the light of Jesus Christ we are demonstrating the character essence and nature of Jesus Christ we are revealing the nature of Christ to the world God bless you <laughs> I, I understand Helen God bless you so what Helen is basically saying that was a testimony from uh, last night uh, Helen was experiencing some really really severe back pain and we were worshiping last night and we're praying and she was just basically saying that she doesn't have any more back pain at all so God supernaturally healed her God miraculously healed her from that pain that she was being afflicted with the Bible says that we when we testify 
there is power and strength that is that is now released for us to overcome the enemy in the book of revelation it says and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony so i took I, I intentionally took a moment here to reveal this to you all so that way faith can rise on the inside of you that way faith to believe god for healing can rise on the inside of you amen hallelujah so that fire it's god's will for us to demonstrate that it's god's will for us to demonstrate that so he says i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness so jesus now says that any person that follows after him will not walk in darkness why because of the greatness of the light that jesus carries so if you follow jesus if jesus is the light of the world and you follow him it's impossible for you to walk in darkness if you're following jesus it's impossible for you to walk in darkness the only times that we walk in darkness is when we are no longer following god the only time that we walk in darkness is when we are no longer following jesus you cannot say that you're following jesus and live a life of darkness you cannot say that you're following god and live a life of sin you and i cannot say that we are living life in the will of god God, but we are living a life of darkness we're living a life of carnality we're living a life of seduction we're living a life of sensuality we're living a life of perversion we're living a life of ungodliness there is no way that we can say that we're following the example of Jesus Christ there's no way that we can say that we're so that we are submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ but we are willfully indulging in sin the two do not mix the flesh and the spirit do not mix either we're gonna be led by the Holy Spirit or we're gonna be led by the flesh either we're gonna be led by the spirit and produce the fruit of the spirit or we're going to be led by the flesh and produce the works of the flesh whichever decision that we make we have to come to the realization and understanding that God is going to judge us according to the decisions that we make God is not making us do anything God is not making us serve him God is not making us honor him God is not making us worship him God did not force you and I to enter into a relationship with him God did not force you and I to enter into a relationship with him and accept accept him as our Lord and Savior God is not forcing us to stay in relationship with him God is not forcing us to walk in relationship with him what am I saying I'm saying that every day that we live life we have to make an intentional decision to obey the Word of God every day that we live life we have to make an intentional decision to present ourselves to God as living sacrifices holy and acceptable unto him every day that we live life we have to make a decision to crucify the flesh every day that we live life moment by moment we have to make a decision to be led by the spirit and to obey the word of God and obey the will of God we have to do that daily why because with every day there is an opposition from the enemy with every day there is an opportunity for us to either serve God or for us to walk in sin with every day that we live life there's an opportunity for us to either bear and produce the fruit of the spirit or for us to produce the works of the flesh this is why our fire has to be burning if we live a fleshly life our fire is going to diminish and we are not going to impact the world that is around us we are not going to impact the world that is around us if we are living a life where in, in, in one instance we're walking with God the next instance we're walking in the world in one instance we're praising God and we're preaching and teaching and we're singing and we're shouting and we're dancing and we're prophesying and we're speaking in tongues and we're doing all these things but in the next instance we are willfully indulging in sin the two doesn't mix God is calling us out from that place I believe that we are in a time where God is calling us out of those places of darkness God is calling us out of those places of carnality God is calling us out of those places of sensuality God is calling us out of those places of seduction God is calling us out of those places of fleshly acquaintances and fleshly relationships and fleshly covenants God is calling us out of those places of darkness why because the time is drawing near the the, the, the appearance of Jesus Christ the return of Christ is drawing near we don't have as much time as we think we have we don't have as much time as we think we have time is winding down the Bible says that no man knows the day or the hour when Jesus Christ will return no man knows the day or the hour when the Son of Man will return so we have to always live life 
from a place of eternal readiness. We have to always live life where we have heaven in mind. We have to always live life where our life is infused with the fire of God, where our life is infused and we're running and burning for Jesus. We have to live life from that place daily, moment by moment. If you find yourself in a place where you're struggling in that area, that's an opportunity to press into the presence of God. That's an opportunity to press into the word of God. That's an opportunity to enter into a place of fasting. That's an opportunity even for you to call your brother and sister in Christ and ask them to pray for you. There is safety in the multitude of counsel. There is safety in accountability. Unfortunately, we are living in an era and a time where people do not want to be accountable to one another. Unfortunately, we are living in an era and a time in the body of Christ where people will tell you, you're not my leader, so therefore I don't have to be accountable to you. You're not my pastor, so I don't have to be accountable to you. You're not my apostle, so I don't have to be accountable to you. The problem with that is that that's very divisive. The problem with that is that it's not rooted in scripture. The problem with that mindset is that that mindset over time, it leads to a place of corruption and spiritual degradation. The problem with that mindset is that over a period of time, it produces what's called sectarianism. That is the very thing that the apostle Paul addressed in the Bible. This is why Paul was speaking in regards to addressing the issue where some said, I am of Apollos, I am of Paul and so forth. And what Paul was saying is that, listen, this is not the will of God. We are all members of the body of Christ. So because we're members of the body of Christ, it's our responsibility to walk together in unity. Because we're members of the body of Christ, it's our responsibility to walk together in, in, in uh, from a place of mutual submission. Mutual submission in the body of Christ. We have to be accountable to one another. If we're not accountable to one another, we are living a life that is counterproductive to the word of God. We're living a life that is counterproductive to the functionality of the church. We're living a life that is counterproductive to the body of Christ. We're living a life that is counterproductive to the will of God for his church in the earth. So God is saying, depart from the places of sensual living depart from the places of earthly living now when I say sensual living I'm not talking about something that's sexual something that is sensual it can be sexual but when I say sensual I'm referring to earthly I'm referring to something that is relegated to an earthly mindset where the only thing that we think about are the things of the earth. The only thing that we think about are the things that are going on in this cosmos, in this world, in this eon, in this age, in this era. When we have a mindset that is only focused on the things of the earth, we end up living life from a place where we are not concerned entirely with fulfilling the will of God. We, When we live life from that place, we run the risk of being led astray stray and let down a pathway of darkness a pathway that seems right but in the end it produces destruction a pathway that seems right a pathway that seems like the narrow road but as we walk down that pathway it only leads to a broad pathway of destruction so God wants us to be in a place where we are seeking him with fervent diligence God wants us to be in a place where we are seeking him and we're running after him and we're living life from that place of passion that place of passion pursuit where we are on fire for God I feel this very strongly we need to be on fire for God we need to be on fire for him there is an urgency in the spirit for us to set our attention on God there's an urgency in the spirit for us to set our affections on God there's an urgency in the spirit for us to seek God like never before when we seek him God will show up when we seek him God will release strategy when we seek him God will release the answer when we seek him God will show himself mighty and strong when we seek him God is glorified when we seek him God is pleased when we worship him in spirit and in truth the heart of the father is moved and God is pleased with our worship and he accepts the sacrifice that we offer to him why because it's holy why because it's pure and most importantly it emanates from a place of love it emanates from a place of gratitude where we are grateful for the mercies of God this is why the Apostle Paul said I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable we have to always keep in our minds at the forefront of our minds the mercies of God we have to keep that at the forefront of our minds what are the mercies of God one of the greatest demonstrations of God's mercy is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We cannot forget the power of the cross. We cannot forget the power of the blood of Jesus. We cannot forget the fact that an innocent man was 
beaten and mangled. His body was ripped to shreds. He was beaten to a place where he was unrecognizable. He did not know any sin. He never committed sin. He was innocent. He did not deserve to die, but he was obedient unto death so that we can live. He was obedient unto death. He took on the penalty of our sin so that we can have eternal life. We cannot forget what Jesus did on the cross. If we forget what Jesus did on the cross, our fire will burn out. If we forget what Jesus did on the cross, our desire to walk in the will of God will be diminished. If we forget what Jesus did on the cross, we will treat the sacrifice as something that's common. If we forget what Jesus did on the cross, we will not value the blood of Jesus. If we forget what Jesus did on the cross, we will not value the Son of God, which is the gift, the gift that leads to eternal life. If we do not value and respect, honor, and appreciate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, then our fire will burn out and we will live a carnal and sensual life God does not want us to live a life of carnality he doesn't want us to live a life of carnality he wants us to live a life that is empowered by his spirit let's take a look at Matthew chapter number five we're gonna look at verses number 14 through 16 I want to show something to you here Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16 Jesus goes on to say this Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. He then goes on to say, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we read in the preceding verse in John chapter 8 verse number 12 where Jesus makes the statement and he says I am the light of the world. Now we see in Matthew chapter 15 verses number uh, or excuse me Matthew chapter 5 verses number 14 through 16 where Jesus says ye are the light of the world. So here we see a biblical example of how Jesus it serves as the light of the world but then he empowers us to be the light of the world. So the scripture goes on to say, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that's in the house. In other words, it's the will of God now that we are the light of Jesus Christ. It's the will of God that our light is supposed to shine brightly in the world. Our light is supposed to shine brightly in the midst of darkness. Our light is supposed to shine brightly in the midst of calamity. Our light is supposed to shine brightly in the, mix, in the midst of the chaos, the strife, the confusion, the evil, the works of the enemy. Our light is supposed to shine brightly this is why Jesus goes on to say let your light so shine before men let your light so shine before men this is not an option it's not an optional thing this is something that is coming directly from the mouth of Jesus Christ it's a commandment let your light so shine before the men why that they may see your good works and then what glorify your father which is in heaven I believe that if we apply what Jesus is saying here in the scripture that people will see our good works that people will see the good works of Jesus Christ our good works are a manifestation of our faith in Jesus Christ our good works that we produce when we live a submitted life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ it's a manifestation of the authenticity of the gospel of Christ it's a manifestation of the love of Jesus it's a manifestation of the power of God it's a manifestation of the righteousness of God it's a manifestation of the love of God so we have to live life from that vantage point why because there are people People that are watching our every move there are people that are watching everything that we do there are people that are studying our lives and from that premise they are now looking at us and saying if they're a believer and they're acting this way and they're acting that way I don't necessarily want to be a part of that if they're saying they're a Christian but they're cussing and they're drinking and they have a nasty attitude and they're getting high and they're smoking weed and they're fornicating and sleeping around or they're saying they're a Christian and they're practicing witchcraft and chakra alignments and yoga they're saying they're a Christian but they're engaging all types of astrology and divination they're saying they're a Christian but they're entering into all types of fleshly carnal demonic practices there are people that are looking at that and they're saying I don't want to be a part of that what's the difference between that person what's the difference between this so-called believer and me myself who is not in the body of Christ in other words what I'm saying to you is that the way that we conduct ourselves in public it matters the way that we can 
conduct ourselves on social media it matters the way that we conduct ourselves in the marketplace it matters the way that we conduct ourselves in every place that we go in public it matters but it also matters the way that we conduct ourselves in private we have to make sure that we are not living a life of hypocrisy because if we're living a life of hypocrisy then the light the pure light of Jesus Christ is not going to be able to shine through us in a bright and radiant manner we cannot live a life of hypocrisy this is not the hour for us to live a life of hypocrisy in fact it was never God's will for his church for his body to live a life of hypocrisy this is why the Apostle Paul says let your love be without hypocrisy the love of God is pure the love of God is peaceable the love of God is rooted in righteousness the love of God is rooted in selfless giving selfless acts of giving how do we know this because in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 it says this for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life we know that the gift of God Jesus Christ in the flesh was a manifestation of the love of God the gift of God Jesus Christ was a manifestation of the love of God so in other words because God loved us so great so greatly and because God loves you and I and every human being in existence God said I'm gonna demonstrate to you I'm gonna show you my love I'm gonna show you what perfect love looks like I'm gonna show you what selfless love looks like so I'm gonna give someone to you to be a sacrifice that doesn't even deserve to die I'm gonna present someone to you I'm gonna give you a free gift even though you're worthy to receive even though you even though you're supposed to receive death I am going to release my love love through the personification of Jesus Christ so when you accept him as your Lord and Savior you will now come into contact and relationship and you will come into an intimate acquaintance with my love Jesus is a manifestation of the love of God the love of God is perfect when you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, your life is set ablaze. When you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, your life is lit. Your life is filled with a flame, a flame of love. And that flame of love has the ability to transform you. That flame of love that emanates through Jesus Christ, it has the ability to introduce you into the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, the apostle Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. It's the power of God. The power of God. The word power there in that scripture is the word dunamis. It's the same word that's mentioned in Acts chapter 1 and 8. After the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. The gospel of Jesus Christ produces the explosive power of God to break the shackles of sin. To break the chains of, of bondage. To break the chains of addiction. To break, to break the chains of affliction. That's the power that's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power that's in the gospel of Jesus Christ is so great that it has the power to literally snatch you from the grips of Satan. The power that's in the gospel of Jesus Christ has the power to snatch you from the grips of depression, from the grips of suicide, from the grips of low self-esteem. The power that's in the gospel of Jesus Christ, it has the power to liberate you. It has the power to set you free. It has the power to bring you into a new place of freedom, a type of freedom that you've never experienced before, a type of freedom that you've never encountered before that's the power that's in the gospel of Jesus Christ when we come into contact with the love of God that's demonstrated through the gospel of Jesus Christ we encounter the truth and when we encounter the truth the truth makes us free and now we live life from a place of freedom in Jesus Christ that is the will of God God wants us to live life in a place of freedom so the question becomes how how do we keep our fire burning? How do we keep that fire burning on the inside of us? The first way that I would say that we keep that fire burning on the inside of us is that we must walk in the light. In the book of 1 John, chapter number 1, verses 5 through 7, it says this. 1 John, chapter number 1. 1 John, chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, it goes on to say this. This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light God is light and in him is no darkness at all if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not practice the truth 
I'm going to read that again. If we say that we have fellowship with him, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This scripture reveals to us that it's God's will that we walk in the light as he is in the light. This scripture declares that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. We know in John 8 and 12 that Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Here, the writer in 1 John 1, uh, 5 through 7 says that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. So in other words, when you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, you come into relationship with the purity of God. You come into relationship with the purity of God the pure moral excellency of God you come into relationship with the glory of God when you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ you can have endless encounters with the presence of God you can have endless encounters with the glory of God when you come into relationship with Jesus Christ you don't have to go through a middleman to get to God you don't have to go through another person to get to God no you have direct access to God and because you have direct access to God you can call upon him as much as you want because you have direct access to God and you have been declared free and you have been declared righteous and you have been declared upright before God you can come before God boldly you can come before him and commune with him as much as you desire why because you have been liberated by the blood of Jesus Christ and you have now entered into covenant relationship with the God of light with the God who is light and there is no darkness in him at all the second way that we keep our fire burning is by living life according to watch this your identity in Jesus Christ now there are uh, there are a lot of scriptures that deal with our identity in Jesus Christ but I'm only going to share this one scripture with you for the sake of time regarding this teaching on this evening and that scripture is in the book of first Peter chapter number two verse number nine this is what it says first Peter two and nine it says this but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So here Peter is writing and he's saying, you are a chosen generation. You and I, we're a chosen generation. We've accepted, if we've accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. Every believer is a priest. We are a royal priesthood from a doctrinal perspective that's called the priesthood of all believers. So we are a royal priesthood. We are also a holy nation. We are also, watch this, a peculiar people. So it's not God's will for you to fit in with the world. It's not God's will for you to fit in with the systems of this world. It's not God's will for you to fit in with the customs of this world. No, you are a peculiar people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a chosen generation why that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light you have been called out of darkness you and I have been called out of a place of darkness what is the darkness darkness is living life outside of the will of God darkness is living a life of sin darkness is living a life that will only lead to death darkness is living a life that is governed by the dictates of the flesh and ultimately governed by Satan himself so we have to live life according to our identity in Jesus Christ. The third way that we keep our fire burning, the third way that we keep our fire burning is by abiding in the word of God. In John chapter eight, verses number 31 through 36, this is what it says. Then Jesus, Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall watch this know the truth and the truth shall make you free they answered him we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone how can you say you will be made free Jesus answered them most assuredly I say to you whoever commits sin is a slave of sin and a slave does not abide in the house forever but a son abides forever Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free in 
indeed it is the will of God that we live a life of freedom it is the will of God that we are not a slave of sin God wants to train if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior God wants to transition you from a life of slavery and into a life of sonship God wants to transition you from a life of slavery and into a life of sonship it is God's will that we be the sons and daughters of God it is not God's will that we are slaves to sin if the Jesus said this very clearly whoever commits sin whoever uh, yields themselves to sin is a slave to sin so the sin that you commit yourself to the sin that you and I engage in whether we do it intentionally whether we miss the mark in that moment in time when we give our members to the slavery of sin we are basically coming underneath the power of sin we're coming underneath the subjective authority of sin and so when we come under agreement or the authority of sin we are coming under the authority of Satan himself why because we know that Jesus Christ we know that God is not the governor of sin we know that God doesn't govern sin but we know that Satan is the thief he's the great dragon he's the deceiver he's the tempter of old he is the thief the one that comes to steal kill and destroy he is the robber so he is the one who tries to entice man to walk in the flesh he's the one that tries to entice man to walk in sin he's the one that tries to entice man to live a life of sin why because if he can get human beings to live a life of sin then he is stopping them from coming into relationship with Jesus Christ he's stopping them from coming into contact with the fire the fire of God the light of God remember we said the light and the fire were synonymous because one of the meanings for the word light there in the book of John chapter 8 verse 12 it talked about fire so if we don't come into if a person doesn't come into relationship with Jesus Christ then they don't come into contact with the light when a person enters into a relationship with Jesus Christ a great supernatural exchange occurs that person is delivered from the yoke slavery and bondage of sin and they are now clothed with righteousness so the yokes, the yokes, the yokes of wickedness, the yokes of sin that were occupying their hearts, oftentimes those things are uprooted and removed and what enters into their heart is the indwelling Jesus Christ, where Jesus Christ dwells within us and he reigns in our heart as Lord, Savior, and King. That's the will of God concerning you. That's the will of God concerning you. But when we enter into relationship with Jesus Christ, it doesn't just stop there. The just shall live by faith. It's God's will that we transition from faith to faith and glory to glory. We're supposed to live life in a way to where every day that we apply faith, we become stronger in our understanding of applying faith in God. So the more that we apply our faith, our faith is strengthened. And we now have the ability, the aptitude, the power to be able to apply faith and believe God for greater things. So our faith increases and we transition from faith to faith and glory to glory. It's God's will that we have glorious encounters with him it's God's will that we are carriers of his glory it's God's will that we are carriers we are carriers of his glory we are carriers of his glory we are living tabernacles we are living tabernacles where the Spirit of God dwells we are living tabernacles we are supposed to be housing heavenly realities heavenly dimensions we're supposed to be housing the supernatural nature of God on the inside of our temples on the inside of our vessels it's God's will that he walks in us that he lives in us that he dwells in us but we can't do those things if we are living a sensual life we can't do those things if we are not abiding in the Word of God we cannot live life from that place if we are not abiding in his presence if we are not valuing and cherishing the presence of God oftentimes we don't pursue God because we don't value the intimate encounters with him oftentimes we don't worship God because we don't value the intimacy that comes with worship oftentimes we don't seek God because we don't value our relationship with him oftentimes we don't pursue God because we don't value the mercies of God we don't value the sacrifice of God we don't value the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ if we value the sacrifice of the cross if we value the blood of Jesus then no one would have to tell us to worship God if we value the blood of Jesus then no one would have to tell us to seek God if we value the blood of Jesus then no one would have to tell us to walk in righteousness if we value the blood of Jesus then no one would have to tell us to walk upright and to put and to 
stop fornicating and sleeping around. No one would have to tell us that. Why? Because we will be inspired to be living sacrifices. We will be inspired to present ourselves to God as living sacrifices that are holy, pure, and acceptable to Him without someone pumping us, without someone priming us, without someone trying to tell us, you need to serve God for this reason. No. If we appreciate the blood of Jesus Christ, then from that place of gratitude, from that place of appreciation, from that place of love, we should be inspired to live life in a way that we reveal the light of Jesus Christ to those that are around us. The world needs Jesus. The world needs to see Jesus. The world needs to see Jesus. The world doesn't need to see our flesh. The world doesn't need to see our bodies. The world doesn't need to see sensual things. The world needs to see Jesus. The world doesn't need to see chest and biceps. The world doesn't need to see hips and breasts. The world needs to see Jesus. The world needs to see the light of the gospel emanating through us. The world needs to see the purity of God. The world needs to see the Bene Elohim. The world needs to see the sons of God. The world needs to see the daughters of God. The earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. The earth is groaning for the manifestation of the daughters of God. But we have to be the burning ones. The sons of God are on fire for him. The true sons and daughters of God are burning for him. They're burning with passionate, intense fire. We have to be willing to burn for him. Even if it means that we got to walk alone at times. We got to be willing to burn for him. Even if it means that we get rejected. Even if it means that we get persecuted. Even if it means that people talk about us. Even if it means that people reject us and persecute us and label us as holy rollers don't worry about them continue to look straight continue to look forward continue to walk down the narrow path continue to walk down the straight pathway and God will honor your obedience continue to follow him continue to pursue after him and he will increase your desire to seek him he'll increase your desire for purity continue to hunger for God and he will bless you with a greater measure of hunger continue to hunger for righteousness and he will bless you with with a greater measure of righteousness. Matthew 5 and 6 says that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled according to your hunger. God wants to fill you according to your hunger. Your posture is impacted by your hunger. Your posture is impacted by your appetite. Oftentimes we don't encounter God because we have the wrong posture. Oftentimes we don't encounter the glory of God because we have the wrong posture. Oftentimes we don't encounter the love of God, the presence of God, the power of God, the favor of God. God the blessings of God why because our posture is off your posture matters to God your posture matters to God if you have the wrong posture you can miss God we're living in a time where we can't afford to miss God missing God can cost you your life missing God can cost you your life Jesus says abide abide in my word if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. The evidence of a disciple is found in their ability to submit to their leader. It's found in their ability to submit to the Lord. It's found in their ability in this context to submit to the word of Jesus Christ and the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's the evidence of being a disciple. This is why Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. The word abide there in the scripture is the word menal. And it means abide. It means to continue in the Greek. It means to endure. It means to be present. It means to remain. It means to stand. It means to tarry. So Jesus is saying that if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Jesus is saying that if you dwell in my word, you are my disciples indeed. If you endure, if you endure the cost that's associated with living and dwelling in my word you are my disciples indeed if you continue to remain stand and tarry you are my disciples indeed where are the true disciples where are the disciples that disciples that are on fire for God where are the disciples that understand that they never grow out of a place of discipleship where are the true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ the word disciple there in the scripture it means a learner it means a pupil it means a follower as a believer we will always be a learner of Jesus Christ as believers we will always be followers of Jesus Christ we can never outgrow discipleship as it relates to understanding Jesus Christ Jesus is the discipler we are his disciples Jesus is the true vine we are the branches so we have to always stay connected to him we have to always pursue him we have to always seek him we have to always have the appropriate posture before him if our posture is off then the fruit that we put that the fruit that we demonstrate is going to be fruit that God is not pleased with if we have the wrong 
wrong posture, then we are going to produce fruit that doesn't line up with the nature of God. If we have the wrong posture, we're going to produce fruit that doesn't line up with the will of God. If we have the wrong posture, I even see this very clearly. If we if we have the wrong posture, it will lead to self-inflicted wounds. If we have the wrong posture, it will lead to self-inflicted spiritual warfare. If we have the wrong posture, it will lead to unnecessary consequences. It will open the door for demonic attacks. Why? Because our posture is off. I don't know who that is for, but God is saying very clearly that you need to examine your posture. God is saying very clearly that you need to examine and evaluate your posture. Some of the things that you're dealing with in your life is a direct byproduct of the fact that you have the wrong posture. And God is saying, this is the moment and time for you to repent. God is saying, this is the moment and the time for you to get things right with me so that I can pour into you. For there is an outpouring. God desires to pour. God desires to pour. God desires to pour. He desires to pour his blessings on you he desires to fill you with a greater measure of his spirit he desires to pour out into your life but you gotta be in the right posture you gotta be in the right position if your posture is off your ability to continue to abide in the Word of God will be hindered and restricted and you'll find yourself abiding in other things as opposed to the Word of God you'll find yourself instead of making the Word of God your habitation instead of making the Word of God your house instead of making the Word of God your number one priority you'll find yourself making other things the number one priority you'll find yourself dedicating your mind to other things and you will no longer be in a place where where you are loving God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind for this is the will of God it's the will of God that we love him with all of our heart with all of our soul with all of our mind if we don't love God from that premise then what kind of love are we giving to God if we don't love God in that way what kind of love are we presenting to him if we don't love God in that way what kind of love are we giving him if we can't walk in obedience to the word of God then how are we saying that we love him if we can't walk in obedience to his word then how can we say that we love him how can we say that we trust him how can we say that he's our Lord and Savior how can we say that we're submitted to his lordship if we're not walking in obedience then we're not true disciples we're imposters it's called hypocrisy let your love be without hypocrisy. Let your love be without hypocrisy. Jesus then goes on to say in John 8, 31 through 36, he says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The aspect of knowing the truth, it means to intimately know the truth by way of revelation, by way of experience, and by way of teaching. To know, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free knowing the truth has the power to produce deliverance in your life knowing the truth has the power to produce deliverance in your life knowing the truth has the power to produce deliverance in your life knowing the truth regarding your 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 value and your worth has the power and the ability to produce deliverance in your life for some of you, for those of you that are viewing this broadcast that are dealing with low self-esteem, God is saying that when you know the truth, when you know that you are loved by me, when you know that you are beautifully and wonderfully made, when you know that you were fashioned and created in a very, very integral and detailed manner by God for his purpose, for his pleasure, from a place of love, when you understand those things, when you know the truth of God's word, though the, the low self-esteem, that depression, that rejection, that anxiety, it doesn't have the power to continue to reign rule and operate in your life why because it's been expelled uprooted and cast out by the knowledge of the truth by the truth of God's Word by the truth of, of, of God's Word concerning you so I hear the Lord saying very clearly to those of you that are viewing this broadcast this is a time where we need to become intimately acquainted with the truth of God's Word this is a time where we need to study the Word of God this is a time where we need to immerse ourselves in the Word of God this is a time where we need to immerse our minds in the Word of God where we need to immerse ourselves in prayer this is a time where we need to seek God like never before this is a time where we need to cry out to him like never before the day is growing short the time is growing short Jesus is on his way back Jesus will soon appear in the clouds to receive his church will you be ready to be caught up in the air with him will you be ready to reign and rule with him in eternity will you be ready to be received as his bride will you be ready will you be ready you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free they answered him we are Abraham's descendants 
and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son, a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. The word free there in the scripture, it means to liberate. The word free there in the scripture, it means to deliver. It means to set at liberty. It means to deliver from the dominion of sin. So now that you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have been delivered and freed from the dominion of sin. The truth of the matter is this. Any person that's living life outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are you are living life underneath the slavery, bondage, and captivity of the dominion of sin. You are living life under the power of sin. You are living life under the rulership of sin. You are living life under the kingdom of sin. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord God, that it would be done according to Carlton's confession even now. Father, I pray that you would supernaturally shift him even now, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, that you would release a supernatural shift, a supernatural shift into his life, into his heart, in the name of Jesus Christ. Carlton, right where you are, just lift your hands to God, and I feel the wind of God. The wind of God is going to touch you. The presence of God is going to touch you. The power of God is going to touch you. Carlton lift your hands and cry out to him as you cry out to God he is shifting you as you cry out to God he is breaking things off of your mind as you cry out to God he is healing you from places of rejection as you cry out to God he is healing your broken heart as you cry out to God he is giving you clarity for the many questions that you've been asking God about as you cry out to God he is giving you clarity even as it relates to unclarified answers that relate to different periods of, 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 of things that happened in your life that you just didn't understand it's like I'm seeing even things going back to your childhood I'm seeing things going back to your childhood your teenage years things that you didn't understand and you were asking God why why did this happen God why did this happen and God is saying that I am revealing my love to you even now I'm revealing the answer to you I am revealing my peace to you now that perfect peace that surpasses all understanding that perfect peace that has the ability and the power to guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus God is saying Carlton Christ out to me and I'm releasing the rain cry out to me and I am shifting you now in the name of Jesus father touch Carlton now God release your glory upon him now God release your fire upon him now God release your glory upon him now God release your fire upon him him now God pour it out upon him now God pour out your oil upon him now God pour out your fire upon him now God in the name of Jesus 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 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the, name of Jesus. the fourth way that we keep the fire burning we keep the fire burning by living a life of preparation through godly wisdom. We keep the fire burning by living a life of preparation through godly wisdom. What does it mean to prepare? Webster's Dictionary defines the word prepare as follows. Prepare means to make ready beforehand for some purpose, use, or activity. It means to put in a proper state of mind. It means to work out the details of. It means to plan in advance. It means to get ready. What am I saying to you? The Bible says work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. This type of fear is not talking about the fear that, that, that is mentioned where Paul is addressing Timothy and he's saying God has not given you the spirit of fear but power, love, and a sound mind. This type of fear is talking about the reverential fear of God. That fear that causes us to honor God with our lives. That fear that causes us to live life like every day as our last that reverential fear that causes us to worship God that reverential fear that causes us to honor God with every aspect of our lives that reverential fear that causes us to appreciate the splendor the majesty the greatness and the glory of God that reverential fear that causes us to enter into a place of wisdom as opposed to living life from a place of folly as opposed to living life from a place of foolishness this this type of fear this reverential fear it leads us out down a pathway of wisdom a 
pathway of godly wisdom, a pathway of prudence, where we are examining every foot, where our, every place where our foot treads. We're examining every decision that we make. We're examining every conversation that we have. That's the reverential fear of God. Why? Because we don't want to disappoint God. We don't want to offend God. Every time that we sin against God, that's an offense to God. Every time we sin against God, that hurts Him. Every time we sin against God, that breaks His heart. Every time we sin against God, it's a slap in the face. Why? Because Jesus Christ died for our sins so that we don't have to give in to the power of sin. As believers, we don't sin because we're powerless to overcome sin. No. As believers, we sin because we make a choice to give in to a temptation. As believers, we sin because we make a willful choice to sin. The truth of the matter is that as believers, we have been delivered from the power of sin. We have been delivered from the power of sin. And we have been given the power of the Holy Ghost. We've been given the power of Jesus Christ. We've been given the authority of the Holy Ghost. We've been given the one who has the ability to lead us, to keep us, and to govern our lives. That's the power that's on the inside of us. You don't have to sin. You don't have to live a life of sin. If you live a life of sin, it's because you're choosing to. If you live a life of sin, it's not because someone is forcing you to. But there is a way out. There is a way of escape. There is a way out. There is a way of escape. There is coming a point in time where God is going to release his wrath, not to judgment, but his wrath against the sons of disobedience. God is going to release his wrath into the earth. He's going to release his wrath upon Satan and his demons and those who have made a choice to willfully reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is coming a day. There is coming a time. There is coming an hour where God is going to release his wrath in the earth to judge, to burn, to consume, to consume the works of darkness, to consume the sin that's been in operation for so long. There is a time where God is going to release his wrath on the sons of disobedience. I hear a sound of urgency where God is saying prepare God is saying get ready God is saying prepare to meet me prepare to commune with me prepare to fellowship with me God is saying get ready live life like it's your last God is saying get your affairs in order get your spiritual affairs in order get your spiritual affairs in order and incline your ear to me and I will speak to you incline your ear to me and I will reveal my secrets to you incline your ear to me and I will reveal mysteries to you incline your your ear to me and I will pour out wisdom into your life the type of wisdom that serves as a means of supreme intelligence the types of wisdom that serves as a means the manifold wisdom of God that wisdom that is pure that wisdom that is holy not that sensual worldly wisdom James identifies that sensual worldly wisdom that the worldly wisdom is sensual and demonic worldly wisdom is sensual and demonic that's not the wisdom that I'm talking about I'm talking about the pure wisdom of God that wisdom that comes from the nature of God that wisdom that comes from the breath of God that wisdom that comes from the love of God that wisdom that comes from the purity of God that's the wisdom that God wants to release that's the wisdom that we have to live according to and a large portion of the wisdom of God is found in his word a large portion a large portion of the wisdom of God is found in the word of God we have to study to show yourself approval study to show yourself approval to show yourself approved this is the time that we're living in this is the hour that we're living in. In Matthew chapter number 25, verses number 1 through 13, it says this. I'm going to read this quickly. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, that is, thoughtless, silly, and careless. And five were wise, far-sighted, practical, and sensible. Now I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Verse number three says, For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take any extra oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil along with their lamps. Now when, uh, excuse me, now while the bridegroom was delayed, while the bridegroom was delayed, they all began to nod off, and they fell asleep. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and put their own lamps in order, trimmed the wicks and added oil and lit them. But the foolish virgin said to the wise, Give us some of your oil because your lamps are going out. Because our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, otherwise there will not be enough for us and for you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy oil for yourselves. But while they were going away to buy oil, the bridegroom came. 
and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast and the door was shut and locked later the others also came and said Lord Lord open the door for us Lord Lord open the door for us but he replied I assure you and most solemnly say to you I do not know you we have no relationship therefore be on the alert be prepared and ready for you do not know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come we have to be ready we don't want to be like the foolish virgins we don't want to be like the foolish virgins who were not prepared for the midnight encounter we have to be prepared for the midnight encounter midnight is a very very significant time in scripture oftentimes in the New Testament when we see the term midnight it was a great hour of deliverance it was an hour where people were delivered and they had supernatural encounters with God another thing that we see is that in midnight I believe that's also the time that Jesus was betrayed by Judas so we know that midnight is an hour and a time where supernatural encounters occur so we have to be ready for the midnight encounter we have to be ready we have to be ready we are in the 11th hour we have to be ready for the midnight encounter we have to be ready to meet God we have to be ready to meet Jesus Christ we have to be prepared another way that we keep our fire burning is by cooperating with the Holy Spirit cooperating with the Holy Spirit in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 it says this but I say walk habitually in the Holy Spirit seek him and be responsive to his guidance and then you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature which responds rep impulsively without regard for God and his precepts it's God's will that we live a life where we are led by the Spirit of God we have to in order for us to be led by the Spirit of God we have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in order for us to be led by the Spirit of God it requires us to say no to the flesh and yes to God in order for us to be led by the Spirit of God it requires us to say no to sin and yes to righteousness in order for us to be led by the Spirit of God it requires us to examine our lives daily and make a commitment every day to be led by the Holy Spirit to submit to his authority Authority, to submit to his rulership in our lives we have to submit to the wisdom of God that is being expressed through through the Holy Spirit into our lives if we don't do that then we will find ourselves living a sensual carnal life and lastly the last way the last way that we keep our fire burning is by living life from a place of spiritual sobriety spiritual sobriety spiritual sobriety first Peter 5 and 8 says this be sober that is well balanced and self-disciplined be alert and cautious at all times that enemy of yours the devil prowls around like a roaring lion fiercely hunger seeking someone to devour first Peter 1 and 13 says this so prepare your minds for action be completely sober in spirit steadfast self-disciplined spiritually and morally alert fix your hope completely on the grace of God that is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed we have to be ready and in order for us to be ready we have to be sober-minded we have to be vigilant why because there is an adversary there is an enemy his name is Satan and he is seeking to devour you and I he is seeking an opportunity to kill steal and destroy Satan wants to kill you he hates you he hates you with everything that's in him he is the father of lies and the truth is not in him he is the father of deception and the truth is not in him he is a murderer Jesus said that he was a murderer from the beginning so we know that he comes to steal kill and destroy he hates you the flesh is not your friend although it may feel good the flesh is a type of entrapment the flesh is a snare that Satan is using to entrap people and enslave them so that he can come in and devour them like a lion I want you to visualize this now I grew up watching the Discovery Channel a lot I grew up watching you know Animal Planet and things like that and one thing that I noticed is that when a lion is on the prowl a lion looks for that antelope or that gazelle or that animal that is out there that has been separated from the pack that's been separated from the herd the lion looks for that one the lion looks for the weak one the lion looks for the feeble one the lion looks for the one that is that is that is a, a you know a calf one that is not mature one that is not grown to a place of maturity that's what the lion is looking for so we see here when Peter
Peter is using this in an allegorical context. What Peter is saying here is that Satan operates in the same likeness. He, he operates in the same magnitude. He operates in the same way. He wants to destroy you. He wants to devour you. He wants to get us in a place where we are no longer following God. He wants to get us in a place where we are no longer submitted to God. Why? Because if he can get us to that place, then we are easy prey. We are an easy target. We are an easy candidate. We are a soft target for us to be devoured by the enemy. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But God says, I am the way. I am the truth. Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way. I proclaim to you that Jesus is the way. I proclaim to you that Jesus is the way. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, there is still time for you to get it right. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, there is still time to enter into relationship with him. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, there is still time to enter into relationship with him and accept the gift of grace and accept the gift of God, which is Jesus Christ. If you are in a backslidden condition, there is time time for you to turn things around there is time for you to run to God the Bible declares that God is married to the backslider if you run to God if you return to him he will receive you with loving arms if you return to him he'll receive you just like he did the prodigal son if you return to him Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Raman de la Jesus is the way if you are in a backslidden condition I encourage you to turn to him now turn to him now if you don't know him and you want to enter into relationship with him repeat this prayer after me say father in Jesus name I repent of all of my sins I confess my sins to you Lord and I ask that you would forgive me of my sins father in Jesus name I admit that I'm a sinner I believe I believe that you sent your son I believe that you raised your son for the dead from the dead and I want to be in relationship with you, God. Lord, enter into my heart. Enter into my heart as Lord and Savior. I believe in you. Come on, pray that prayer. Enter into my heart as Lord and Savior. I want to be in relationship with you. I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name. When you pray that prayer, when you pray that prayer and you confess, and you confess your faith in Him, and you confess your desire for him to be in your heart and for you to be in relationship with him God will save you you will enter into relationship with him and you will be saved you will be saved you will be saved is there anybody here that needs prayer I want to pray for you if you need prayer I want to pray for you hallelujah if you need prayer I want to pray for you if you want God to ignite a new flame of fire on the inside of you say that's me God is going to touch you and infuse you with fresh fire God is going to touch you and infuse you with fresh fire God is going to touch you and infuse you with fresh fire is there anybody that's hungry is there anybody that's hungry is there anybody that's hungry? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would fill Sharita Baker now, O oh God. Fill her with a fresh fire, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would touch Crystal Collins. Fill her now, God. Fill her to overflowing, God. Fill her to overflowing. Fill her to overflowing in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would fill Priscilla to overflowing, God. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Father, I pray that you would touch Mildred, God. That you would fill her now with fresh fire. Father, I pray that you would touch Carol. Fill her now with fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire in the name of Jesus fresh fire father I pray that you would fill Carlton now God fill him with fresh fire God fresh fire God fresh fire God father I pray that you would fill Philippa now God fill her with fresh fire God in the name of Jesus fresh fire Remasianda. fresh fire God fresh fire release your power God release your glory God father I pray Lord God that you would fill Sheila now God that you would fill Clovis now God in the name of Jesus God fill them with your fire God fill them with your fire God fill them with your fire God in the name of Jesus fresh fire God fresh fire God fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire in the name of Jesus 
in the name of Jesus is there anybody else anybody else that's hungry for God anybody else that's hungry for him do you want a fresh touch from God father I pray that you would touch my brother elder Clarence God fill him God fill him to overflowing God fresh fire God fresh fire God in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ is there anybody here that's dealing with plantar fasciitis father i pray lord god that you would fill my aunt adrian god touch her now god touch her in her household touch her in her husband god fill her fresh god fresh fire god fresh fire fresh fire in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ is there anyone that's dealing with a foot injury like plantar fasciitis or some type of tendonitis in the foot i want to pray for you Ten, plantar, plantar fasciitis or some form of tendonitis or something that's going on in the foot I want to pray for you like I'm seeing pain within the arch of a foot pain in the arch of the foot along the top and the bottom Father I pray in Jesus name oh God that you would heal Sheila Carter now in the name of Jesus Christ I command I command inflammation to depart from her foot now in the name of Jesus Christ I command plantar fasciitis to be broken from off of her foot now in the name of Jesus Christ for this injury will not require surgery this injury will not require surgery father in Jesus name I pray Lord God that you would release your fire your healing fire to touch Sheila now God your healing fire to touch her foot now God in the name of Jesus Christ even as we're praying now even as we're praying now father release your fire release your fire release your healing fire in the name of Jesus burn away I decree now creative miracles shall be her portion I decree now that you are doing a miracle in her foot that you are working a miracle in her foot a miracle in her arch a miracle in the area of plantar fasciitis God I declare and decree it now in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray now in Jesus name God that you would release and commission even now angels of healing angels that will partner with your word angels that will go in and that will assist me even now as it relates to ministering healing to her now healing and deliverance I declare and decree deliverance oh God deliverance oh God deliverance from the foot injury God in the name of Jesus Christ I declare and decree healing over her now healing over her now healing over her now in the name of Jesus Christ healing over her now father I pray even now God that you would release an outpouring of your spirit upon her now God release signs miracle and wonders in her life now oh God in the name of Jesus Christ I command it to be so now in the name of Jesus Christ Sheila are you feeling the fire of God on your foot are you feeling the fire of God resting upon you what I'm seeing right now it looks like the fire of God descending upon you from the top of your head that warm feeling that warm burning sensation it's not a type of fire that harms you but it's a type of fire that is very peaceful a type of fire that is soothing a type of the type of fire that motivates you, that inspires you to run for God. That type of fire of purity. Is there anybody here that wants that? Is there anybody here that wants that? That wants that fire? In the name of Jesus. I see the word depression. I see the word depression. If you've been dealing with depression, I want to pray for you. You don't have to say that that's you right now. If you've been dealing with depression and you don't feel comfortable saying that, you don't have to say that. But I know, I know what the Lord is revealing and I want to pray for you. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would release your fire upon Carol Lawrence now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would touch her, God. Touch her, God. Fill her cup to overflowing, God. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would even release now greater revelation in her life, O oh God. That when she reads your word, Lord God, that different things in your word, different forms of revelation in your word will be supernaturally highlighted. Father, I pray that you would give her supernatural wisdom and understanding as it relates to understanding your word. Father, I pray even now, Lord God, that you would bless her with a greater measure with a greater desire a greater anointing to go out and witness to the lost to go out and do the work of the evangelist in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray oh God that you would cover her that you would keep her life oh God from the hand of the enemy that you would keep her life from the wicked schemes of the enemy that you would keep her life from the wiles of the devil I bind and rebuke now word curses that have been released against her mind word curses that have been released against her identity Satan the Lord rebuke you now I declare and decree 
decree now that the fiery darts of the wicked one that it shall not prevail I declare and decree now that the that the weapons of the enemy the weapons that the enemy has been launching against you I declare and decree now for Carol that those weapons will not come to pass they will not prevail they will not prosper in her life in the name of Jesus Christ I declare and decree over Carol that she shall carry your glory she shall walk in your glory she shall walk in power she shall walk in demonstration in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray oh God that you would continue to fill Carlton Carlton I see God touching you even now God has been stirring a desire on the inside of you because you are hungry for him God is saying I'm filling you to overflowing continue to cry out to me I and there are no limits to the amount of a fire and love and, and the, the measure of the spirit that God wants to pour out on the inside of you Carlton continue to cry out to him and he is filling you now father I pray Lord God that you would do a new thing in Priscilla's life oh God father I pray that you would do a new supernatural thing in her life oh God in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray that you would cover her and keep her from the spirit of infirmity I bind and rebuke now the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ I bind and rebuke now the powers of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ I bind and rebuke now the powers of divination the powers of voodoo the powers of, of, of Santeria the powers of Ifa, the powers of demonic practices that people have been trying to use to illegally gain access to her life I bind and rebuke it now in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare and decree that she is covered now she is covered and protected by your mighty hand God she is covered and protected by your mighty hand God father I pray Lord God a Psalms 91 blessing over her God a Psalms 91 blessing over her God he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty father I pray Oh God that you would keep her under your almighty shadow father I pray in the name of Jesus that you would keep her under your almighty shadow that no evil would be able to prevail in her life God that no evil would be able to overtake her God in the name of Jesus father I pray Lord God that you would release a fresh fire upon Mildred Walker God in the name of Jesus father I pray now fresh fire shall be her portion father I pray now that you would cleanse her with the washing of the water of the word God that as Mildred pursues you as she seeks your face God as she immerses herself God in your word as she walks up right before you father I pray Lord God that you would do a great transformative work in her life transform her mind God transform her body God transform her into your glorious image God continue to prune God continue to cut away God unfruitful things in her life God continue to cut away God unfruitful relationships Mildred I see unfruitful relationships being severed in the name of Jesus Christ God is doing a great and mighty thing in you it may not seem like it it may not seem significant but God is drawing you closer to him God is drawing you into a deeper place of intimacy with him God is calling you deeper God is saying launch into the deep God is saying launch into the deep God is saying come to me come to me come to me and I'll give you rest come to me and I'll give you rest for your weary, weary soul God is saying come to me and I will show you great and mighty things in the name of Jesus Come on, take a moment and lift your voice right there for a moment. I hear the sound of intercession. Lift your voice to God right there. Father in Jesus name I pray for the United States of America Father I pray Lord God that the weight the weight of conviction conviction of righteousness conviction of sin God Father I pray Lord God that you would release a weight upon this nation oh God Father I pray Lord God that you would awaken believers worldwide that are living life in a place of dormant uh, uh, in, in a dormant place God Father I pray Lord God that you would do a great awakening God a great awakening around the nations of the earth God a great awakening in your body a great awakening in your churches God in the name of Jesus Christ I bind and rebuke discouragement now in the name of Jesus Christ father I lift up pastors to you now God father I pray Lord God that you would cover them and keep them from depression God I pray oh God that you would cover and keep pastors God from discouragement God from bitterness oh God in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray Lord God that you would cover their hearts God cover their minds God from the advancements of hell father I pray for the five-fold leaders God I pray Lord God for the leaders and members in the 
the body of Christ, oh God. Father, I pray for your church, God. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would help us, God, to walk in unity, God. Help us to put aside petty differences, God. Help us to walk in unity, God, for there is strength in unity. When we walk in unity, God, you release the anointing. You release the oil, God. There is a corporate anointing that God wants to release. There is a corporate anointing that God wants to pour out, but he's not going to do it in the body until we come together in unity. There is an end time anointing. There is an end time, a last day's anointing that God wants to release during this time, but we have to come together. We have to walk together in unity. If we are not willing to walk together in unity, we will continue to deal with the same things over and over again. God wants to shift us into a new place in him. God wants to shift us into a new dimension in him. God wants to shift us into a new reality in him. God wants to do a great shifting in your life. For every person that's viewing this broadcast, I prophesy now that God is going to shift things in your life. I prophesy now that God is going to shift things in your life. God is going to shift things in your life in the next 30 days, in the next 60 days, in the next 90 days. God is going to shift things in your life. I see God doing great and mighty things in your life according to your faith, according to your posture. God wants to shift you into a deeper intimate place with him. God wants to shift your trajectory and bring you into a greater place of fellowship, a greater place of communion, a greater place of alignment. God wants to do that thing in your life. If you want God to shift you, say shift me Lord. Say shift me Lord. Shift me Lord. Shift me into your will God. Shift me God. Do a course correction in my life. God wants to do a reset on the inside of you. God wants to do a course correction with your appetite. I see appetites being uh, purified. I see appetites being purified. Appetites that were that were dedicated to, to demonic things, that were dedicated to fleshly things, that were dedicated to carnal things. I see God shifting the, ap the appetites in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would shift Crystal Collins now, God. Shift her appetite now, God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shift Tracy. Shift Priscilla. Shift Clarence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shift Carol. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shift Philippa. In the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. God, we thank you for the shifting. We thank you for the shift that's occurring, God. Shift Carlton. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the shift, God. We thank you for the shift, God. Father, we lift up the state of Louisiana, God. We lift up the Gulf Coast states, oh God, as the hurricanes are coming in, God. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you would weaken these storms, God. We pray, Lord God, that you would do a supernatural thing, Lord God, in relation to these storms, God. Father, we pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that your hand would rest upon, Lord God, your people in this hour, God. Father, as these ominous storms are brewing in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Caribbean islands, God. Father, we pray, oh God, that you would do a miraculous thing, God. We petition you now, God. We petition you now, God. And we call upon you to answer, God. We call upon you to answer, God. We ask of you, God, that you would deliver, God. Deliver, God. Deliver, God. De show yourself to be great and mighty, for you are the great and mighty God. You are the great and mighty God, for there is no one greater. You are the greatest in existence, God. So we know, God, that nothing is impossible with you, God. We know that nothing is too hard for you God so we believe the impossible God we ask God that these storms that these storms would fizzle out that these storms would die out in the name of Jesus Christ that the waters would become cooler that the atmosphere the pressure in the atmosphere that it would increase so that these storms would weaken oh God in the name of Jesus Christ for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof God we know that the earth is yours every aspect of the earth belongs to you God so we know that you have the authority God to do the impossible we know and believe God that you are capable to turn this situation around regarding these storms God so we ask of you God do the miraculous God in the name of Jesus I lift up California God the wildfires that are in California father I pray God that you'd release the rain God release the rain God release the rain God release the outpour release a downpour God a downpour God a sudden downpour to quench these wildfires God in the name of Jesus Christ if there are people that are operating from a premise of arson father I pray God that you would remove that you would reveal them God that you would remove them God that you would expose them God in the name of Jesus Christ we are calling upon you God we are petitioning you God hear our hearts cry oh God we thank you for hearing us God in the name of Jesus Christ come on lift your voice right there Lift your voice right there. Lift your voice right there. 
There is power in your intercession. There is power in your prayer. Don't ever underestimate the power that's in your voice. Don't ever underestimate. Don't ever underestimate the power that is in your voice. There is power in your voice. There's authority in your voice. Use the authority that's in your voice. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray even now, God, we lift up every form of police brutality, racial inequality, systemic racism, prejudice, white supremacy. We lift up uh, uh, any, any situations that are dealing with racial tension on either side, whether it's black, whether it's white, whether it's Latino, any of those things that are demonically inspired. Father, we pray now, Lord God, and we ask God that you would judge these matters, God, according to your righteous judgment, God. Judge these matters, God. Judge these matters according According to your righteous judgment, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we know, God, that your statutes are perfect. We know, God, that your judgments are perfect. We know, God, that everything concerning you is pure, God. So we call upon you, God, not for, not for our own purposes, not for our own desires, Lord God, but we know that you are a God of justice and you are a God of mercy. So we ask, God, that you would release your justice now, God. Release your justice now, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, is there anybody here that's been having an issue with employment? Like you're either searching for a job or your job is about to end or, you're, or you've been laid off from your job, like furloughed. Is there anybody that's dealing with an issue as it relates to employment? I want to pray for you. Is there anybody that's dealing with an issue with a job? I want to pray for you. bless you God we magnify you God we honor you we adore you we lift up your holy name God anybody dealing with an issue with the job <laughs> Carter said he's working too much you know, Carlton, I don't know, that, that, that might not be a bad thing, brother. <laughs> but it might be, you know, if it's interfering with, you know, family time and stuff like that, man. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Yeah, Elder Clarence, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Okay, Tharol, I want to pray for you as well. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for every person, God. Every person that's dealing with an employment issue. Every person that's looking for a job. Every person that's seeking a job. Father, I pray now, Lord God, that you would open doors for them. Open supernatural doors for them to walk into God-ordained uh, places of employment open supernatural doors for them lord god to walk into places of employment lord god effectual doors for them lord god that they wouldn't have to fight to get into god that they wouldn't have to stress to get into father i pray lord god that your favor would rest upon them mightily god i pray that your favor would rest upon them in great measure in the name of jesus christ father i pray lord god that even as they apply for jobs by faith lord god i pray lord god that you would honor their faith in you lord god God, and that you would open the doors the doors of provision the doors of provision for this is a month of open doors this is a month of open doors so father I pray Lord God that the same doors that you open for me the same doors that you open for other people father I pray that you would open those doors for them now God for you are faithful for you are not a respecter of persons for you are not a partial God father I pray that you would open doors for them now God in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray Lord God that you would help them to recognize the demonic doors, doors that were erected by the enemy, doors that were erected to lead them down a pathway that's outside of your will for their lives, God. Father, I pray that you would open the doors now, God. Open the doors for them now, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And God, we glorify you, we honor you and bless you. Father, I pray for those that are viewing this broadcast. I pray, Lord God, a special blessing over them, a special blessing over their household, a special blessing over their finances in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I'm even seeing right now, I'm even seeing right now what looks like a form uh, of, of unexplained things that have been in, uh, occurring in someone's house, but it's demonic in nature. It's demonic in nature, like the appearance of shadows, things moving around. It's, 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 it's unexplainable. You know, you, you can't really describe what's happening. You know, you can't really make sense of it. So, so I'm seeing like these supernatural, demonic, demonically inspired things that are incurring in someone's house. I want to pray for you if you're on this broadcast. Maybe you'll view this broadcast later. But if you're on this broadcast, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you because I know that God is great and mighty to deliver. I want to pray for you because I know that God reveals things for the purposes of redemption. I know that God reveals things so that a person can be liberated and set free from any form of demonic power that is coming against them. So if you've been experiencing strange things in your house, you know, dark shadows appearing, you know, objects moving, doors closing, closing, things falling down, strange noises, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you father in jesus name because i don't know if i have a feeling like this person maybe maybe they're going to watch this broadcast later but i want to release this prayer father in jesus name i pray lord god for whoever that person is that's encountering those things father i pray in jesus name lord god in jesus name lord god i command those things to be broken i command the presence of the enemy that is operating in their home that's operating in their lives i bind rebuke it and dismantle it now in the name of jesus christ father i pray oh god in jesus name that demonic manifestations that are seeking to operate in their lives that are seeking to operate in their homes that are seeking to torment them that are seeking to afflict them i bind and rebuke it now in the name of jesus christ i bind and rebuke it now in the name of jesus christ i see an open door priscilla i don't know if you have an open door in your life but i see an open door 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 that is given open door and i see blood so somewhere within your bloodline there's an open door father in the name of jesus I bind and rebuke now the bloodline affiliations with demonic practices. I bind and rebuke now the bloodline affiliations with ancestral worship, with familiar spirits, with divination, with necromancy in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray now, Lord God, that you would liberate and free Priscilla from the residue of those demonic practices. Father, I pray now, Lord God, that you would sever now any ties, any connections to any person that operates in those things that is in Priscilla life oh God in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray Lord God that you would place a hedge of protection around Priscilla God I pray Lord God that you would cover her I pray God that you would keep her mind God I bind and rebuke the spirit of fear now in the name of Jesus Christ and father I pray Lord God that the power and the authority that's on the inside of her would rise up and, and demonstrate your power like never before that darkness would have no choice but to flee God in the name of Jesus Christ now we give you glory God we give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Until next time, grace and peace. I pray that you enjoyed this word. I pray that it blessed you. Remember, you do not want to let your fire burn out. Keep your fire burning for God. Keep your fire burning for Jesus. Do not let your fire burn out. We are living in a time where we cannot afford to let our fire burn out. Because if we let our fire burn out, we run the risk of missing God. And you don't want to do that. Amen. God bless you all. I pray that you have a good evening, a good morning, a good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. God bless you.